Hello everyone, welcome to Reactify Labs. Today, I am going to talk about the difference between a buffer and a cache. Okay, so let's write it down the headline. Buffer versus no, it's cache. If we go just by technical definition, a buffer is a temporary holding area that manages the flow of data between two places. Whereas a cache is like a quick access storage that holds frequently requested items so they can be served faster. And as we know that a technical definition uh, does no good in understanding or explanation you will memorize it and you will forget it so in all my videos i try to explain using an example here also i'll use an example so let's say there is a food truck this food truck makes fast food okay you decide to go to the food truck to observe it okay this is you so what you saw was that there was one guy preparing the order and there was one guy here taking the order taking orders preparing orders okay so what happens was this person takes the orders from multiple people and gives it to this person okay what happens if this person alone does both the things see what will happen this person so let's say one person comes i'll write it person one Person one comes, orders a uh, let's say egg roll. The cook takes the order, prepares it, delivers it. Meanwhile, person two is waiting. Right, the person two will keep waiting. Or this person might need to go back and forth between taking orders and cooking it, which is not good, both in terms of efficiency and the quality of food. Also, what may happen was, let's say the person one, when ordered egg roll, at that time, before going to cook, if this person if this uh, guy takes the order from person two as well and the person two also says that he also wants egg roll then this guy can uh, prepare two egg rolls two rolls together thus saving him time and saving the wait time of the customers as well right so this is why we need two people here okay so one person takes the order and other person just uh, just cooks it so this person who is taking the order acts as buffer so the person who is taking the order takes the order and passes it to the cook and acts as buffer means it acts as a temporary holding area it temporarily holds the order and manages the flow of order like okay if the order is coming slowly it will pass the list to the cook slowly if it is coming very fast it will pass the list to the cook fast but obviously making sure that it does not exceed the capacity or the speed of this cook this person can have uh, let's say thousand orders in a minute but obviously the cook cannot cook at that speed so yeah keeping that thing in mind uh, this thing passes it right okay next is let's say 
you know you are the food truck owner not you the food truck owner knows that every day there is one dish let's say noodles which a lot of people take okay so lot of people prefer noodles so what this person does is he prepares it in advance prepares it in advance and as soon as someone comes and asks for noodles what this guy does is he just takes out and gives or serves takes out the noodle and serves it so this thing where we have a quick access storage for noodles this is cash you can see the buffer is a temporary holding area for the orders but cash is where we know that okay this order is going to come for sure so let's fetch something in the cash and just store it there okay um uh, i hope this example explains the difference between the buffer and cash now if we go by technical examples we will see that for buffer we have multiple things one is video streaming so what video streaming does is it retrieves and downloads a few bytes of video from the server when streaming okay so this is you you are watching on your screen this is the server let's say let's make it like this okay this is the server instead of your tv or computer fetching directly from the server and showing it to you what it does is it stores it in a buffer area okay and the buffer keeps on supplying it to you so if you would notice that even if internet goes away and uh, or the light goes away then your video does not stop automatically because the buffer keeps on serving it buffer which is attached in your this device the buffer keeps on serving it as long as it holds if before this gets empty the electricity comes back or the internet comes back then you will get uninterrupted experience if not then obviously there will be an issue or else if you have already downloaded the entire movie then that's a different thing but if you are live streaming then this is the buffer which gives you the um, content steadily so let's say uh, you are watching it at say 100 mbps and at one point there is some disturbance in the internet and the speed reduces to 100 kbps so the screen the memory the screen which you are watching at 5 mbps which is consuming at 5 mbps let's say now this will st still consume at 5 mbps but this 100 kbps speed is going to fill this buffer slowly but still there will be filling so you won't get any lag until this entire thing expires and this 5 mbps becomes greater than what the amount is available in this buffer only then you will experience that okay there is a lag there is a buffer so every time what happens is it will wait for some time this 100 kbps fetching 100 kbps will fetch 5 mbps in 5 mb data in 50 seconds after again 50 seconds one screen will play for 5 mb and again it will start fetching so this is what we call buffering buffering means we are fetching from the buffer this is fetch fetching from the buffer which is slow and that's why we are doing this buffering right so this is where it happens another very good example is a uh, kernel buffer so when an application writes to disk it usually up to the kernel to decide whether to write it to disk or the buffer but even if decides to write to buffer for fast access because when this kernel writes to disk it might be slow instead what it does is it writes to buffer and this buffer once it's filled it writes to disk in the back end so that the kernel can keep writing to the buffer fastly okay so if we go by the definition buffer is a temporary area where data is stored in the main memory or disk while moving from input system to output system and cache the good examples for cache are web browser cache 
So your web browser cache stores data on your local computer so that it can be easily accessed. So if you would notice that if you open Facebook on your browser and you close it, okay, and you turn off data, and next time you again open Facebook, then it will not show you data uh, error or mm, uh, internet connection is not there. It will show you the previously fetched page. Why? Because it's there in the cache. And only when you refresh the browser, it will try to fetch again. And if the internet connection is not there, it will not be able to fetch. Or if it is there, it will fetch a new page for you. Okay. Next is similar to this is the data from frequently visited pages. Frequently visited pages. Right. So these are the most common examples. Others are also, if you would notice in your uh, laptop or computer there is something called recently accessed files if you go to your file manager you will see a section called recently accessed files it means this these are the files which have been fetched in the cache memory so that you can access it fast if you notice if you, next time when you go see the computer you notice that try to open a file in the recently accessed file section and try to access one file which is not there which is in the disk this one will take more time why because it is being fetched from the where disk but since it's already in the cache it will be uh, fetched quickly and that's why the recently accessed sections are there because cache has one temporal locality and spatial locality depending on which it fetches the things in the cache and displays it to you quickly right so Again, the definition goes like a cache is a storage location where an application temporarily stores data to reduce data access time and latency, right? And if we have to see the technical difference between buffer and cache, so I don't think it's required, but I'm doing it. So for buffer and cache, what it does is buffer is used between processes to increase efficiency and account for speed differences used between processes right why so that it can increase efficiency to increase efficiency as we talked in the example of the fast food and this cache is used to store frequently accessed data frequently access data why so that latency is reduced uh, as you saw in the example of fetching quick fetching can happen okay it stores the original data the data in buffer will always be fresh original data and this stores copy of data cache does not have original data cache fetches the copy fetches the data stores its copy uh, also, buffer will always have fresh data, but cache may or may not have fresh data. So it can have stale data as well, stale data or fresh data. So these are some of the differences between buffer and cache. And I hope it's clear now with all the different types of examples, both in the, both the fast food example and the, uh, real computer system example and with technical definition and technical differences also so i hope this clears everything and now you can answer a question which asks the difference between buffer and cache so thank you for watching please remember to like share and subscribe i will see you in the next one